The journey to the November 4 presidential election in the United States kicked off on Thursday with two main contenders, that's President Biden, representing Democrats, and the former President Donald Trump really standing in for the Republicans. I'm sure that by now in your home, wherever you might be, the, the analysis will be based on who actually won. But much more than that, who actually has the dreams that can be referred to as American dreams? Or maybe the American dream. We'd like to hear from you as we progress this morning. Let's also remind you that it was the first ever debate between the sitting president and the former president, so to speak. Some will say maybe many years gone past, so many other things must have happened. Joining us this morning is the international political analyst, Dane Waters. This is his show, but we roll together. Good morning, Dane. Good morning. It's great to be here. I'm very honored to be here with you today. So Amazing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, look at him very well. He'll be here every Tuesday at 9 o'clock or at 9.15, I beg your pardon, to really bring you up to speed about concerning everything that happens around the world. So, I want to imagine that you saw it from uh, the arrival of each uh, pres presidential candidate at the airport in Atlanta to how they were welcomed by the supporters and then to the, that very long time of waiting to see what would happen when the debates actually kicked off. How did you see the build-up before we go into it, to the debates that held in Atlanta on Thursday? Well, there's a lot of build-up. I mean, people talk about how this was going to be one of the most uh, important presidential debates in the history of presidential debates. Um, both candidates had a lot to, to prove. I mean, Biden, of course, had to come into the debate trying to prove that his age was not an issue. Trump had to come in prove, trying to prove that his convictions and his personality and his, um, well, what most people would describe as his exaggerations were not an issue. So, I mean, the buildup was very substantial. And both sides spent a you know, some substantial amount of time, both with their surrogates and individually, trying to, to prepare for this. So. It was it was it was critical, and the outcome definitely is. I can say we'll have an outcome on the election. This was primarily in the, at the instance of the president's handlers. I'm talking about the Democrats at this point in time. You think that uh, <laughs> it was a good decision at this point in time? Anyways, there was still going to be debate, but did you think that it was the right decision and that it was it, and actually well executed by the president? First of all, I think that, you know this was one of the earliest debates they've ever had in presidential elections, and a lot of the, you know, a lot of people question about whether it was the right thing to do or not. Honestly, I would argue that it was the right thing to do because in political campaigns, you want to find out what your weaknesses are as soon as you can, and you want to find out uh, what the people will be thinking about uh, as soon as you can, so you can address those. Uh, so, from a Biden standpoint, I it was it was it was a risk. Um, uh, and I think it was very important that they they took the risk because now they they know that that you know the president has some very serious issues to not just substantive issues but it, you know listen it's not this debate was more about the personalities honestly than the issues um, and I think that President Biden sadly showed that his age is an issue mm -hmm. um, and I think it's going to uh, cause a lot of discussion about whether to po possibly replace him before the Democratic convention in, in August. It would make me come to the question that, I mean, uh, his wife, the First Lady of the United States, Jill, did say that, look, it's not about age, it's about the character of the person that we deserve as a president of the uh, United States. And so many people would say, if you just suppose that, uh, considering that, are you look at what happened and how the president was able to uh, deliver on Thursday. You, you sound like you're one of those people who, who thought that, uh, we would think at this point in time, better put, that the president didn't really perform uh, according to expectation. No, he didn't. I mean, you know, listen, the presidency is about character. There's no doubt about it. But, but in the office of, 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 of the presidency, to me, has been one of the most sacrosanct offices in the world, and the person who occupies that office is very important. And that is the distinction among most Americans, and among many Americans, between Trump and Biden. However, people want to be able, you know, character is only as good as you're able to execute it. And a lot of people are concerned that the age of Biden and the way, you know, he performed is not going to allow him the mental capacity to execute. Um, I mean, just for, just for honesty, you know, just to be very clear, I supported Joe Biden in the last election. I'm a long-term Republican, uh, but I did support 
uh, President Biden. I've known President Biden for a very long time. I've, I've known President Trump for a very long time. Um, but, you know, so the spin is, is about character, but it's about the American people wanting to feel comfortable that the person can execute the office, especially from the standpoint that the president controls nuclear weapons. Um, you know, they control foreign policy. They control so many things. So even if you have the greatest character in the world, uh, if you're not able to execute it with some mental, you know, mental awareness, it's a problem. So I don't think it was a very good um, uh, outing for the president. Very few people uh, would argue that it was a good outing for him. Um, so we'll now have to see what happens. Give you the flow most of the times. So let's now take it one after the, after the others. All those issues that uh, really came up for discussion. Expectedly, the handlers didn't disappoint most people around the world. They began with the economy. Uh, how would you rate the responses of both candidates with regards to the plans for the American economy moving forward? Well, there are a lot of exaggerations on both sides about the economy. Who takes credit for what? Whether you know Trump talking about the lowest taxes in the history of presidency in the United States, which is just technically not true. I mean, this is where President Biden had the opportunity to show that, you know, inflation is down, um, uh, the number of jobs uh, that have been increased have grown under his uh, his administration. I mean, there was a lot of missed opportunities for President Biden uh, to to show that the the economy, honestly, is, is going much better. I mean, the, listen, the U.S. economy is in trouble. There's no doubt about it. Just like most industrial nations, economies around the world are in trouble. The U.S. is in trouble, uh, but under the Trump administration, uh, uh, you know, the economy grew in certain areas. But under the Biden administration, unemployment has has uh, diminished, inflation has diminished, um, and so I think they both had opportunities to take credit for it. Uh, and I think that whether, I mean, you know, the the growth of the economy. Let's put it this way: the growth of the economy under either president really depends on your political philosophy. Trump is touting lower taxes, cutting taxes. Uh, Trump is talking about government investment in um, um, in, in the country. So, you know, I think both can have a positive impact on the on the economy. Uh, I'm more of the lower tax kind of guy, but but I don't think President Biden was able to fully articulate his his future vision or his accomplishments uh, during the debate. And then let's take a listen to the two gentlemen, what they had to say with the plans for the American economy and also looking back at the first term of four years, each of them have served out as president of the United States. Take a listen. An economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out in the, the position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come of household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. Price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. And we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination, what I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you have, take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now, we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people. The situation is making, we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. Thank you. President Trump? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. We Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929 by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess 
Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Thank you, President Biden. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world. He, he Sure, you watched all this. We all stayed up by this part of the world to see what it was like for, with both men. Uh, what you heard President Biden say, and uh, what you especially, I love the, the way that Tapper really put the question. He said that inflation low in America now, but the prices remain high. And the, the, the former president went ahead to say that he left no inflation in place, was flat inflation while he left. And the president also answered him how much he's been able to deal with that, even when it be, uh, remain right now at a single digit. Uh, do you think, which of these two men do you see that, that has a better package when in, terms of, uh, in terms of economic plans for the American people? First of all, one thing I want to point out is one thing you saw in that clip is how um, one of the reasons uh, Donald Trump did so well in the debate is that he was very measured. You know, he was very, very measured, and that was one thing he wanted to accomplish through the debate is to show that he, you know, he wasn't going to attack uh, uh, President Biden personally. And I think that that's a perfect clip to show the, the difference in between the two and their, their debate prep and how they handled it. Economically, you know, I think that um, it's, it's a tough call because once again, you have to, you know, our, our economy is so immense. And one of the issues we have uh, with global conflict, with, and I do believe one thing we'll talk about on future shows is the, is the, is the growth and likelihood of more global conflict, which will have our, you know, which will impact all economies. I think the critical thing for our next president is to ensure that our economy can withstand additional global conflict, whether it's between China and Taiwan or the continued uh, war between Iran and uh, or the growing potential between Iran and Israel. I mean, all of these will impact the economy. And I think uh, the biggest thing there is going to be the number of jobs, um, uh, low unemployment. I mean, that's critical uh, when we have to prepare to, to withstand uh, a global turndown. Um, import tariffs, we're going to have to import, you know, impose additional import tariffs against China, whether whether it's just because of the war in Russia or whether it's, uh, you know, their attack on Taiwan. So this will have an impact on our economy. And so I think that uh, if I had to choose, I think economically, I think President Trump probably has a better economic plan. Um, if America is just a standalone country, but I do believe that if there's a global conflict, I think it's important to have a president there like President Biden who can help better prepare us for the long-term implications of that global conflict. So it's not a simple yes or no, mm. black and white answer. Very interesting, you know. Uh, some other very big issues, main contention on, on Thursday, uh, which we've heard the American people really show interest in, would, let's say, immigration. I uh, will follow that uh, closely uh, with abortion. Uh, immigration, the, the, everybody knew that President Trump was going to come for President Biden uh, on the way and manner he's handling such uh, a very important issue within his country. Uh, based on the debate and the policies that you've seen so far, where would you tilt and why? I think when it comes to immigration, uh, you know, I, I, I am a guy who believes that we should have more moderate immigration. Uh, I, I'm, I'm adamantly opposed to illegal immigration. Uh, but legal immigration is important that we manage it. I think Donald Trump, uh, President Trump, when he was president, I mean, the whole issue about building the wall and things of that nature, I think was kind of a joke, but his handling of immigration and limiting immigration was very important. And then when Biden came in, President Biden rolled back a lot of the rules that uh, Trump had put in place, but now he's actually having to put those back in place because of the uh, massive growth of, uh, of immigration into the country. Once again, that goes to the global conflicts we're having around the world. Uh, more and more people are looking for stability. So I think that uh, you know what Biden wants to get across and what he tried to get across is that when it comes to immigration, you have to have a, a heart. You have to be empathetic, and you know not you know not separating families. You know, trying to keep the family unit together because it's critical whether they're in the United States or wherever they're from. And Trump is more of a, this hardcore. We just we just need to to stop immigration because it takes jobs from Americans, you know. I do not subscribe or agree with his 
Trump's thoughts and you know on how illegal immigrants, you know, more violent crime is just not a proven statistic. But I do think that we need to do a better job dealing with immigration. Same issue you need to see happen in the UK and any country in the world, any industrialized country. Uh, but once again, this is where President Biden did not do a good job, in my opinion, of really articulating his uh, immigration policy. Uh, we do have an issue in the United States where we have uh, uh, almost 20 times the number of Chinese immigrants coming across our border, which is interesting. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with China trying to infiltrate uh, prior to you know what I believe is global conflict coming with Taiwan. So there's a lot of things going on, but I think we have to find a much better way. And I don't believe either president has found that uh, that common line that would really address the immigration issue. Very interesting. You, you know, uh, when I heard how the the way the, the former President Trump came for President Biden with regards to what he had seen. Uh, his policies regards to immigration affecting the people. He, he just as you said, he sold himself very well, and so would agree with you entirely that the President Biden uh, performed just below expectation. But uh, that's not what his handlers are saying. Let's talk about uh, some would say human rights, and some would say abortion, which also was a very big issue last night. Uh, who do do you think at that point in time took the best? Uh, uh, position in terms of what the people would desire. Well, once again, I keep going back to this about President Biden. You know, it was an opportunity for him. Uh, I mean, with, you know, the, the one issue. I mean, I think the dividing one of the deciding factors in the election will be female votes, women votes, um, uh, and whether you're Republican or Democrat, abortion is is a critical issue for for women in the country. Um, and I think President Biden had the opportunity to really go against uh, President Trump and his Supreme Court nominees about, uh, you know, overturning Roe v. Wade, but I think it was a lost opportunity. As I am a believer, um, you know, I'm, you know, just for argument's sake, I'm a pro-choice guy, but the reality is what, 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 uh, where Biden had the opportunity to say, listen, we, we don't need a, we don't, we need to restore Roe v. Wade, but what Trump did, and I think he did a good job, is talking about, uh, because this is an issue where you know, he was, people were afraid he'd be backed into a corner, but he's a state's rights guy and says, listen, it's up to individual states to make these decisions. Um, and that's where I am, honestly, on it. The individual states should make the decision, let the people within those states make the decisions. But that's right. going to be an issue that I think you're going to see more and more TV um, uh, commercials on, advertising from the Biden campaign, attacking Trump on this. Hmm. Um, uh, so we'll see what happens. Of course, Ukraine came up. I was looking forward to, you know, listening to what both gentlemen would have to say. Who treated it the best way ever? Oh, I'm sorry. What was that now? What did you say? Ukraine. The war in Ukraine, uh, Russia's oh, invasion Ukraine, yes. there, and how the uh, president, as President Biden, has been able to handle the situation so far. Uh, but former President Trump came up high talking uh, about the fact that so much money had been spent on Ukraine and maybe some other issues uh, that President Biden also uh, picked up. You, you want to respond to that? You know, first of all, you know, uh, <laughs> the price of freedom has no uh, has no limit on the amount of money you have to spend. I mean, this is where Donald, this is where President Biden has the upper hand um, to the older electorate uh, in the United States. Because if you look at the electorate, uh, younger generations are not as concerned, sadly, about uh, freedom and democracy because you know the, than than the older generation. And so, I think that President Biden has done a phenomenal job in trying to ensure that there's support for Ukraine and he understands the implications um, uh, of not supporting Ukraine and Russia's just not going to stop at Ukraine. And President Trump, I mean, listen, most Americans who are in the ultra conservative world believe that, okay, you know, we need, we need to deal with our own economic issues prior to giving billions and billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine and we must stop it and do all this kind of stuff. And this is what, you know, President Trump tries to say. But the reality is, I think that in the long term, he's going to fall short. Uh, I think that you'll see additional conflict between now and the election, uh, which will go to um, uh, people who argue is because of, uh, of Trump not dealing with some of these issues when he was president. So um, uh, personally, I would like to see more discussions on this. I would love to have seen discussions and questions about you know, how both presidents uh, would deal with if China attacks Taiwan. President Biden's on record as to saying he'll defend Taiwan. But that's a question that President Trump has continued to evade. Uh, but these are issues when it comes to foreign policy that must be addressed because the world is getting 
worse and worse and more volatile uh, than better. And it's important to know how the United States, uh, the presidency would respond to these issues. And I think the American public and the world deserves to know more about how President Trump would deal with these issues. One candidate, 82, the other one, uh, I mean, uh, 78, both of them not young at all. Uh, in closing, in the next two minutes, Dane Waters, what would you say generally, what did you see during yesterday's, uh, you know, the first debate? Many people are looking forward to the second one, perhaps uh, maybe other things to come. And what, did you, what do you know about these two gentlemen that could really decide or act as decider uh, for the American people on which way to go when November 4 comes around the corner? First of all, I think, the, I think you see the Democratic Party and the Democrats trying to uh, get out of the next debate. I really do. I mean, I just, I just think that uh, uh, it's just really no benefit to having another debate if President Biden is the one doing it uh, on the Democratic side. Listen, I think the victor uh, in all of this, which has not been discussed, is, uh, is uh, the third party candidate or independent candidate of Kennedy. Um, you know, uh, Kennedy, you know, who's running, uh, I think a lot of Americans will look and say against Biden, listen, we just can't have Biden. We need another choice. I think those people who listen to Trump and realize Trump is a convicted felon and all of these issues. So I think Kennedy, an independent candidate, will benefit more from this debate than anybody else. And that, in turn, will lead to a greater opportunity for Trump to win. You know, honestly, if I was a betting man, which sadly I am, um, I think that this is an election for Trump. Uh, he should win it. Uh, barring any unforeseen changes. Um, um, even if the Democrats change their candidate, which I just really don't see happening, um, I just don't, it's going to be very difficult for Biden to get the upper hand. Now, one thing to remember also is that President Trump is going to be sentenced uh, for his conviction on July the 11th. And so that will have some impact um, on the electorate. There's so many things here. This is one of the most unusual presidential elections ever, where there's so many moving parts. You have the the the, the legal issues with Trump, um, you know, the the convictions, the trials coming up. You got Kennedy out there. You've got uh, and Biden and his age and his inability and the possibility that Democrats are going to be divided now and want to find a new candidate. It is one of the most complex presidential election cycles we've seen in over a generation. Very interesting. And so uh, at this point in time, in 30 seconds, Dane, we'd like for you to tell our viewers what to expect from you from Tuesday, where your program around the world with Dane Waters kicks off 9.15 a.m. every Tuesday. In 30 seconds. Okay, can I say something in 30 seconds? Uh, no, the real, around the world with Dane Waters, listen, the world is a very complex place. There's so much, uh, whether, whether it's Iran, China, Russia, Ukraine, Middle East, United States, South America, there's conflict everywhere in the world. And what we're going to, we're, we're going to do with around the world with Dane Waters is we're going to talk about these conflicts, how all these countries interact with each other, uh, how it will impact countries, whether it's Nigeria, Kenya, uh, the United States, uh, or France or the UK. We're going to talk about all the current events uh, and the impact that they will have around the world. And every now and then we may sneak in something a little funny and unusual for the viewers to hear about. But I hope you tune in every Tuesday to, to listen. We're looking forward to that. International political analyst Dave Waters, we thank you for your time with us today. I will look forward to watching your show on Tuesday. Thank you indeed, James. Thank you. Maintain. Listen, the, the, uh, the Never Trump. I'll break it down in a couple of days. Uh, now, what's the matter with you? You're in. Syria, Lagos has become one of the largest exporters of the ivory world. The third world nation. We vote for the stolen. We vote for the law